Okay. Now, when we keep our mind, our concentration on the object, whether it's Dharma Kaya object, Sambhaka Kaya object, or Nirmana Kaya object, when we keep our mind there, is it strange? Can you stay on the object without any disturbances or without any thoughts? Are we able to do that? How many of we can do without, you know? Including me, I cannot, so I raise my hand. <laughs> now why? This is because, not because that we do not have Samadhi in the mind. We already have Samadhi in the mind. Samadhi is not produced or gathered from other. Our mind is already Samadhi. Our mind is already like a space. But now, the space is not experienced properly. Space is not seen properly. Why? Because of clouds. Whether it's a good cloud, bad cloud, I mean white cloud, dark cloud, doesn't matter. Because of those things, the space has been a little bit obstructed. We say that, oh, I have to gain shamatha. I have to you know, develop samadhi. Actually, we already have samadhi. Our mind is already in samadhi. But because of our fabrication, we forgot the, our samadhi mind and we are lost with the concept and the thoughts. Subject-object relationship. So we are lost with this. So therefore, we are not able to come back to our own original peaceful state. The peaceful state is not necessary that we have to gain from other by practicing. It is already there. It is already within our mind. Our mind is already equipped with the peace, the deepest samadhi, dharmakaya samadhi. It's already there, but because of thought. Now, to get that, to go back to this, to realize this back. Realize means, why they say realize? Why they uh, do not say they're you know, getting or something, earning? Realize means what we have. Oh. I, some dot in my, as I mentioned earlier, somebody says, or you know, looking in the mirror, I realize, oh, something is here. That means it's already there, but we realize it, that it's there. So like that, to realize the samadhi in the mind, what we have to do is, now we have to deal with what, now we have to know the, what is the distraction. Okay, if my mind is already in samadhi, my mind is already in shamatha, then why I am not in shamatha? So what is the problem? What made me not able to abide in Samadhi? Now, concept, thoughts. This is the main distraction. Now, how to avoid this thought or how to dissolve this thought? Again, Buddha has taught in a different vipassana. Different, like first turning of wheel, Buddha has taught the vipassana. And second turning of wheel, like Mahayana teaching, Buddha has taught specific vipassana. And in Tantric or like in Vajrayana, they have taught specific how to deal with these thoughts. First turning of wheel, avoiding, pangwa. Now, we are trying to do this. Why? Because we are trying to, we don't need thought just now. Therefore, we are trying to eliminate the thought. This is the first turning of wheel, pangwa. Juruwa, transformation in the Mahayana. And in the Vajrayana, Mo Shepa. Pangwa Jirwa Shepa. Pangjur Shesu. Shepa means understanding the thought itself. If you understand the nature of thought itself, there is no reason that you have to, I mean, avoid the thought. The thought itself is, if you understand thought itself as an emptiness. Our mind is empty. The thought is empty. Awareness is empty. Mindfulness is empty. So, where is the dis dis disturbances now? Till now, we have been disturbed by the thoughts. We consider thought is a big disturbance, right? But, in Vajrayana, if we understand the nature of thought, if we see thought as an empty net, thought itself is an empty net, then more the thought comes, you will experience more emptiness. Just now, we are going to, I mean, talk about the general shamatha that is, you know, practiced by Theravada, Mahayana, and Vajrayana. Every practice, you know, practitioner, they practice this. So we are going to talk the, the general one. Now, when we be like this, we are not able to stay in one position or the state because of our thought. Now, how to how to be abide in the state without disturbing, without disturbances from the thought? We have to practice properly. Suppose like sometimes 
master, they say that look at the flower or look at you know something and just be there and just do meditation. That's enough. And when we do, then we also follow and we do it. But how much we practice, however we practice, our shamatha never grows. If somebody brings a bud and just send in this house, they will say you fly it. Then this bird will fly. But this bird will fly only within this room. No matter whether you practice like 100 years, you, if you do not know the specific, if you do not have a specific introduction towards practicing shamatha, there are nine stages of the shamatha. And first, second, and third is a one group. If you do not get introduction, the fourth one, then we cannot go fifth and sixth. Then sixth, we cannot reach seven and then eight. If we are not in the eighth stage, there's no possible of getting the shamatha, I mean samadhi mind. So therefore, now the first step is to just focus. Can we focus? I think we can do meditation together only. I will introduce how to be in the spacious mind. But before that, let's see the, what are the steps has to be practiced. So when you practice, you just imagine you are already in kind of a, you know, unfabricated state, kind of a spacious space, you know. Why I say spacious? Because there are no disturbances of those sense objects. You don't, you know, focus on them. You focus on what you're supposed to focus. And you are being in a spacious. So, okay, when the first step is to just look at the object. As soon as we look at the object, we are habituated of thinking. As soon as we look, thinking will produce all oh, this, that, the, that. But we have to continue. This continuation is the second step. But when we, even if we continue, again because of our habitual, we have a habit of thinking, so again we will get lost. In the first, the first, as soon as we look at the object, actually, we, before looking, we start thinking. Before looking only, we already started producing the thought. That first step. We cannot even look. As soon as we look, we start imagining, oh, this is shaped like that. Together. So many fabrication. But second one, you may not fabricate, but you lost. You look, but after some time, your thought produces. Then, with little bit of effort and difficulty, you have to come back. Again, it will go. Again, it has to come. Again, it will go. And you have to do many times like this. Because our mind is so habituated in. Because we never catch the mind and we never send the mind through our own will. Mind has been moving and thinking in its free will. We have given freedom to the thoughts. We have given freedom to the, you know, these concepts. So they are actually controlling us. Our mind is not controlling the thoughts and this one. But thoughts are controlling us. Thought has, you know, overtaken the nature of mind or spacious mind. So, now second, thought will come and we have to, we have to play within the mind. We have to, so when you do that in the beginning, you may feel that, you know, before meditation, actually, I am a calm person. I am very calm. Before meditation, I am very happy person. Now, after, you know, starting meditating, now, I'm not a calm anymore. Thought produces, wow. So we feel more agitated. How come, you know? As soon as I sit meditation, I feel that, you know, every thought is coming. But if I do not meditate, and if I just go somewhere, then we don't feel that. We are not disturbed. Why? Because we are not watching our mind. We are not just remaining calm and watching. That's why we didn't realize that we produce the thoughts. But now, we are sitting calmly and we are trying to be in the mind, single-pointedly. That moment, the challenges come now. Here we discover that, wow, our mind is actually full of thoughts and concepts. So now, when we stay in the mind, then we know that you know, our mind is not stable, it's a moving. So now, third stage, mind will go. But here, we can bring back easily now. Second, mind will go and start following something. Okay, this, this, I'm going tomorrow here. Then it will continue there, there. Then we'll realize, oh, I'm lost. 
it will take a little bit of time. But the third stage, as soon as you are lost, third stage, lost means you will lose the object completely. Three stage, you will lose the object completely. First stage, you will lose. Before watching, you will you are lost already. Second, little bit, you can stay, but again, it loses. Third, you can stay a little bit more, but again, it loses. But it can come back. Now, the fourth one is the most important for a practitioner, because like, I'm sure that we have been practicing for a very long time, right? Like shamatha, at least like breathing meditation, or, you know, trying to keep our mind calm, and we did that. So now you, you, now you should compare where exactly I am, what kind of shamatha practice, like how guided I am, which level I am, so one can understand this. Now, fourth level is, because of the thought, having a habit of just keeping our mind a little bit longer, even if you get lost, coming back. So because of that reason, Jokpa, Jundu Jokpa, Lente Jokpa, Nyar Jokpa, the fourth stage. Now, it's very interesting. The fourth stage is, our mind will be with the object. Yet, one part of thinking will go on. But here, one part of mind will not lose the object. 